What's really in your dog's food? There are plenty of regulations intended to keep food safe for people, but there are concerns, some new concerns about pet food. Julie Watts takes a look at what lab tests found in some best selling brands. We thought we were going to lose her. The vet blamed Penelope's kidney failure on her dog treats. Janie blames her Benji's death on his food, too. I think it's criminal, really. They're among the thousands of pets with illnesses or deaths linked to pet food in recent years, and in many cases, they don't know what in the food made pets sick. The FDA has received over 9,000 pet food complaints since 2010, ranging from diarrhea to death. Now lab tests commissioned by the Clean Label Project are shedding light on what they say are shocking levels of contaminants lurking in pet foods. What was most surprising for you? Seeing lead levels that were 55 times those observed in the Flint, Michigan drinking water. Jackie Bowen says they worked with Ellipse Analytics to test 900 of the best-selling pet foods and treats for over 130 contaminants and toxins. We're talking about lead arsenic, mercury, cadmium. Instead of nutrition, she says they focus solely on contaminants, which the lab says it found in products from nearly every brand tested. The levels vary dramatically from product to product within each brand. Foods are branded organic, they're this, they're that, but the reality is that most of the foods that are out there just have to comply with basic FDA requirements and they haven't been researched. Veterinarian Dr. Jill Chase notes animals can be more tolerant than humans to many contaminants. However, you should always be concerned when you hear the food you are feeding your beloved pet is high in these values because lead, for example, is kind of a silent killer. This guidance following the Flint, Michigan water crisis says pets should not drink water if the lead levels exceed 150 parts per billion. But Ellipse Analytics says this cat food tested positive for 15 times that level of lead, while other products from the same company had no lead at all. Contaminants vary because there's different ingredients. And she notes the FDA, which regulates pet food safety, doesn't monitor claims like human grade. If they're making a human grade claim, it should meet human grade standards. But the lab says it found lead in this dog food at three times the FDA guidance for lead in certain human foods. And tests found this brand with human grade ingredient claims had a product with 15 times the EPA's mercury limits for human drinking water. Though these substances can be naturally occurring, may also be found in human foods, and each brand also had products with much better results. So exactly how much is too much lead, arsenic, mercury, or cadmium for your pet? Well, the FDA has no set limits. So Bowen says the Clean Label Project used the EPA's Safe Drinking Water Act as a benchmark. In the absence of any federal regulation that had maximum amounts for pet food, we had to rely on something. That in response, the FDA said relying on the acceptable levels for humans is not a sound approach to determining acceptable levels in food for dogs and cats, noting the size difference, lifespan, and physiology of pets and that humans drink more water. If we can't compare human food to pet food, then there needs to be some regulations. Give us some. The FDA reports 15 pet food recalls so far this year, none related to the contaminants outlined in this report, but the agency says any level of those substances must be safe for the animal. While some companies tell us they don't test for these contaminants because there are no set limits, Ainsworth Pet Nutrition says they do test their products and stand behind them, though it did not provide test results to dispute the lab's findings. The pet food industry notes that the raw data and statistical methods were not publicly released, stating it is impossible to assess the credibility or significance of recent claims made. However, the industry admits it did not request that information, Ellipse Analytics did share its data with us. We shared a subset with the pet food companies we contacted. The Clean Label Project is now calling for more disclosure and limits on these contaminants, something many pet parents would like to see. They should make whoever made them eat them themselves. Now the Clean Label Project is launching a fee-based certification program where it will randomly test foods from participating brands. Yeah, and those that pass will receive a seal similar to Good Housekeeping.